Hello, my name is Tim Colgreen, Director of Civic Education at the Indiana Bar Foundation. And with me today, we have Levy Wash, who's a prosecuting attorney in Marion County, Indiana. And we're gonna have a conversation about the role of an attorney at a trial. So Mr. Wash is a Deputy Prosecuting Attorney for the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. Previously, he's worked in, as an attorney in private practice and an admissions advisor for the McKinney School of Law. He's earned his bachelor's degree from Ball State, an MBA from Indiana Wesleyan, and a law degree from IU's Robert H. McKinney School of Law. He's a member of the Marion County Bar Association, Indianapolis Bar Association, and Indiana State Bar Association. So Levy Wash, it's great to have you with us today. Great to be here. Great to be here. Thanks, Tim. Awesome. So as mentioned, we're going to be talking about the role of an attorney in a trial. And as with any element in mock trial, there isn't just one right way to do things. So we're going to have a conversation with an expert on a way to help the mock trial team with the topic and looking at this element today. So let's start with this. Our legal system is described as an adversarial system. The attorney is the advocate for the parties. Tell us about what that attorney does. What does an attorney do at a trial? What's the role of the attorney? Sure. Uh, so the attorney's role is to advise clients and represent them um, throughout the legal process. Uh, sometimes that can be just providing advice, uh, general, general advice about certain situations. Um, other times it's preparing documents and pleadings and ultimately uh, representing them at trial or in court at specific hearings or things like that. You're you're that that guiding that guiding person for anybody that needs the 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 help. That's right. That That's right. <laughs> well, great. Uh, um, the, I've noticed there are different names and roles for attorney depending on the trial. So it might be a little different if it's a criminal trial versus a civil trial. Can you tell us some of the differences, like the name differences or the sure. role differences? Sure. Um, so I'll just start with the, the criminal trials. Uh, so there's prosecution and defense. Uh, the prosecutor is usually, uh, well, not usually, it's always the, the party that is bringing the case against the accused. Uh, they charge and try the case um, against the, the defendant. And um, the defense attorney is there to represent that particular defendant's interests and legal rights at trial. Um, in civil trials, there's plaintiff's attorneys um, who represent the plaintiff, uh, which is the party that is bringing the lawsuit. Um, and then there's the defense attorney who represents the party that is being sued. I think the, the main difference uh, between the criminal and, and civil trials is the burden of proof. And so in a criminal trial, you have uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, which is a very high standard, a very high burden of proof. Um, and then in civil trials, you have what's called preponderance of the evidence, uh, which is a lower standard of proof. Um, and so that would be the main difference between the two. And even if it's criminal or civil, the attorney is the important part there. You know, having a pro the, the either side of the case, criminal, civil, that attorney leads that side of the case, the, the necess necessity of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you have, you know, from a prosecution standpoint, I mean, um, you represent the state. And so you're representing the state's interests and I bring the case on behalf of the state, you know, to protect victims' interests and victims' rights. Um, and, th and then you have, you know, on the defense side, you're defending an individual, right? So you want to make sure that their constitutional rights aren't being violated and that um, you do hold the state accountable and make sure that the state proves their case against that particular person. Uh, great, great work there, too. So as an attorney, you prepare to be an attorney, what are some skills that you find important for an attorney to have? Sure. Um, you know, so one of the main skills I think is attention to detail. Um, obviously knowing your case, knowing the facts of your case and the law as it pertains to your particular uh, client or, or who you're representing. Uh, but some of the things that I think kind of get overlooked sometimes are like the soft skills, the relationship building and uh, the civility, right, and the ability to work together with opposing counsel, um, which always, in my opinion, um, works in the best interest of the client, or if you're representing the state, works in the best interest of the state because it allows you to get cases resolved. I like that you mentioned the civility piece there, too. I mean, it's not totally what you see on TV. It's not just law and order of yelling at each other all day, is it? <laughs> exactly exactly and that can only impede the process right you know 
And so I think it's uh, that's one of the more important things that I've learned. And it, you know, it's advocating for your client, but you have to remember that it's within this ethical framework um, and it always works in the best interest of both parties. Uh, great, great point. Great tip there too. Um, I'm guessing most times when you are working in a courtroom, you have somebody helping you, some sort of co-counsel, maybe sitting at that table next to you. I'm going to guess communication between those co-counsels is important. So why is that important? How best do you communicate with each other while the trial's going on? Tell me about working with a co-counsel. Sure. Um, so in jury trials, you usually have a first chair and a second chair. Uh, first chair is usually in charge of, uh, you know, they're the ones in, mainly in charge of the case. And then the second chair is more of a supporting role, theoretically. Um, you know, practically how it works out is that you're both kind of working on the case together. And so it's a team effort. Um, you know, one of the, the biggest parts of the trial that's important to have a co-counsel is when you're doing voir dire. Um, you have one attorney who's standing and they're talking to the jury. Uh, you know, oftentimes you may not see everything. And so to have a co-counsel who's sitting at the table and they can kind of remember what answers certain jurors are giving. Um, and then when you go to consult with them, you know, that conversation is very, really critical to picking the correct jury for that particular trial. Um, and also, you know, I think even when doing direct examination or cross-examination, you know, oftentimes you get through your outline and there may be things that they picked up, you know, that you may not have seen. Uh, and so it's important to remember that you can pause, you know, when you're done and you can consult your co-counsel. Is there anything that I that you think I left out? Uh, and, you know, oftentimes you'll find that they have good questions that you can then ask in addition to what your outline was. Teamwork, teamwork, you know, yeah. helping each side. Yeah. That's oh, right. That's Great. Um, how about this? Um, in mock trial, we have witness statements or kind of the equivalent of an affidavit um, to let everybody know what each witness knows about the case. So maybe do you have some suggestions on how to prepare a witness as before they take the stand? Sure. Um, so usually we try to have uh, jury meetings. Uh, so you'll have your co-counsel uh, and you'll meet individually in person with all of your witnesses. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, I like to do um, is when you meet with the witness originally, you let them talk and kind of just tell you their story, right? When you have an outline of what you think they're going to say and what they, you know, you think their testimony would be. And then if any issues come up, you guys can kind of talk through those particular issues during the jury meeting. Um, and so you're kind of prepared before you go to trial as to what the that particular witness is going to answer. Um, and, and sometimes you'll, in preparing, you'll have witnesses that will ask you, what should I say, right? And the answer is always tell the truth, so. <laughs> That's always right there too. It's not tell the truth, tell what, what you know and there. And so Absolutely. don't stray from what you know. Absolutely. <laughs> um, how about this? I, I call our, the, when a mock trial setting, you look at the rules of evidence. And I call it kind of the rules of the game. And I think of the objections that you have in there too. So um, thoughts on learning objections or learning the rules of evidence or when you want to object or anything. Sure. Like so learning the rules of evidence is probably one of the harder things. One of the hardest things you can, uh, you have to learn as a trial attorney, but it's one of the most important things too. Um, there are little handbooks where they give you kind of just a general uh, guideline as to most common objections that you can purchase online. Um, but I think with objections, uh, one of the things that I was taught is just because you can object doesn't necessarily mean you should object. Um, you know, you have to keep in mind that sometimes the jury may think that you're trying to hide something. And so I think just saving those objections for, um, you know, particular things that are really critical to your case, um, you know, would be my strategy as far as objections. And and also, you know, the judge would appreciate, you know, in certain situations, not having very many objections to that kind of disrupts the flow of trial. So I can see that. Is is there some sort of tip or skill or something that to help make that determination? This is critical to object to, or maybe this is one of those things I could let go. 
Sure. Um, I think, well, one of the more common objections you'll hear is going to be a hearsay objection. Um, and so there's particular words that you kind of pay attention to when someone's given their testimony uh, that give you a indication that this is probably hearsay or going to be hearsay. And so you start paying attention to those things. Um, but I think uh, if you're if there's a piece of evidence that defense is trying to get in and you know it's something that should not be allowed in and that particular piece of evidence would harm your case then at that particular point you definitely would have to object gotcha no that helps to kind of keep that in mind of make the the priority piece in there too and, and evaluate that sure um how about this one of the first things that happens in a trial is the opening statement so how do you use the opening statement to set the tone, set the story that you're trying to portray? Sure. Um, so, so I mentioned voir dire a little bit earlier, but even so before the opening statement, you kind of, during voir dire, uh, you kind of create your theme there, right? You kind of start talking to the jury because that's your first time to kind of talk to the jury and uh, kind of educate them as to what you're going to be talking about. Um, so I think you know, in that particular instance, once you come from voir dire, they already got a pretty good picture of kind of what particular issues you want to talk about. And so in the opening statement, uh, you know, you just, you want to capture their attention, right? You want to present your theory and uh, create this, this story, even though in, in criminal cases, it's not a story, it's an issue, it's a situation that actually occurred, right? But you're, you're talking to them and creating this theme and kind of giving them uh, a guideline as to what evidence you're gonna present, you know, who's gonna um, testify and, you know, kind of what the, the main story is about. You're starting them down the path that you want them to go on. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so bookending that is the closing argument. We've gone through everything. And so I, I'm trying to think of this, how does an attorney prepare for that, knowing the trial is fluid. You don't know 100% of what's going to come out in the trial. You know what you want, but it could change. So how do you prepare for a closing argument? So it can be difficult. Um, but I think, you know, from, a, from the state or the prosecution's perspective, uh, you have both, both a first and a second close. Uh, so usually in the first close, the goal is to just go through the evidence that you have presented, right? Like, what have you shown the jury through the course of this trial that proves each and every element of this particular criminal offense? And so you can prepare for that by usually creating a PowerPoint um, and kind of illustrating to the jury, you know, which witness you put on the stand that proves this particular element or what piece of evidence, you know, proves this uh, particular element. And then defense will have an opportunity to give their closing arguments and the state has an opportunity to rebuttal. And so usually in our rebuttal, we, we don't know exactly what defense's closing argument is going to be, right? And that kind of speaks to the fluid part of the trial. Um, so you have to be really attentive and try to respond um, to the arguments that the other side is presenting in your rebuttal. But again, you, you always bring them back to, look, this is the evidence that was presented, and here's why we proved each and every element beyond reasonable doubt. And I know your lens is on that prosecuting side. Is there yeah. a different point of the defense side there of things that they're trying to, uh, you know, stop or or make that reasonable doubt or Absolutely. how do they control the flow of the trial? So as the, as a defense, your 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 job is to present your closing argument and say why the state hasn't proved their case, right? And you poke holes in in why this particular uh, witness is not credible or you know the chain of custody, if they're presenting evidence, why there's issue with chain of custody, whatever issue um, you have on a defense perspective, it's your job to highlight those issues during your, your closing arguments. Oh, that's great there. Um, what, do, you, do you got anything else that we didn't cover? Any kind of tips or strategies that you think a mock trial high school student or their advisors should know about an attorney role and going forward in, in their trials? Um, I think one of the, the, I mean, the biggest thing is always just being prepared, knowing your case, uh, knowing the law surrounding it, um, 
it, it's important because when issues come up at trial, if you know the facts of your case and you know how certain things could affect your argument and your side, I think it makes you better prepared in responding to those. Um, so I think just just being prepared and knowing the facts and the law is a very important tip that I would I would offer. Yeah, oh, that's that's wonderful. That's great advice today. Great tips. Levy Wash, thank you so much for having this conversation with us and for the mock sure. trial teachers and students that are watching. And we really appreciate it. No problem. And thanks for having me. Tim. Absolutely.